Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're looking at one of the most discreet and pocketable cameras I've ever used, the Canon SD1400 IS. So this is a 14 megapixel CCD sensor camera from 2010. It has a 28 to 112 millimeter equivalent lens on it. And you can find these for about $40 on eBay in really good shape. Um, but there are dozens of similar PowerShot models out there. So you should have no trouble finding one even cheaper than that. There's a few reasons why I picked up this specific camera. I love the flat black look with the metallic ring around the lens. Uh, the body is all metal, so it feels really solid. And this camera is just such a sleeper. Nobody's going to care if you're out on the street taking pictures with this. The other reason is because this camera is supported by CHDK. Huge shout out to my viewers who turned me on to this hack. If you've ever shot older Canon cameras, you're probably familiar with Magic Lantern. This is a similar concept, except instead of replacing your firmware, CHDK sideloads alongside your firmware to give you new features that were not previously on your camera. The most important one for me being raw capture. If you guys want, I can put a tutorial together for how to install and use CHDK. It's fairly straightforward and I'll put a link in the description if you want to look into it. But I'd never considered shooting one of these small power shots in the past because I shoot raw. And for me, I just want the most information off of the sensor as possible. And I want the best archive of my images as possible in case I want to go back and re-edit something later. I kind of look at it like saving your film negatives. And with as cheap as hard drives are these days, in my mind, there's just no reason not to shoot RAW. Let's jump over to Lightroom and I'll show you guys a comparison between the JPEG and RAW output of this camera, thanks to the hack. I chose this image for a couple reasons that we'll get into, but this is the edited RAW. This is the straight out of camera JPEG. I noticed right away on the JPEG that everything's kind of washed out and muted. Also, if we zoom in, there's just a loss of detail um, throughout the images. There should be some grain here and there should be some texture to these stones that's missing. And also these fine detail areas around these branches has just been smeared by all of the compression that's happening. Um, alternatively, if we look at the straight out of camera raw, we can see a lot more detail. We can see grain still and we can see all of these fine branches much more clearly. The other thing you'll notice is we're capturing the full width of the sensor now. So a lot more area than the JPEG. That's because there's a lot of cropping being done to compensate for the distortion of the lens. Because of the hack, we unfortunately don't have those lens profiles, but it's fairly easy to do over here in the lens correction tab. Um, we can just sort this out real quick, somewhere around 36. And then if we hit constrain crop, it's automatically going to crop it some for us. Um, to match the JPEG, we're going to crop it a little bit further. That's looking much straighter than before. Um, also, we can clean up some of this chromatic aberration as well. It's a pretty good starting point for our edit. If we compare these side by side, um, JPEG on the left, RAW on the right, you'll notice the differences in color. We've got more color information in the RAW file along with all of that detail that you just can't get back after it's lost in camera. You know, with a few more tweaks, I think this is looking pretty good. Again, this is more of a lo-fi digicam file, but I think having the best interpretation of that and the best starting point possible is important. Let's talk about actually using the camera because it's a fairly slow experience. 
Now, the way I have this set up currently, I have to put in a cheat code to get the CHDK hack to load. There is a way around this to auto load the hack from your SD card. It's a little more involved in terms of how you set up your SD card, but probably worth it if you're shooting with this camera every day. The other thing that will slow you down though is raw capture. So if I go to take a photo, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000. So about five or six seconds to actually save the raw file. Not a big deal if you're shooting, you know, static subjects, but again, something to be mindful of if you're trying to capture fast moving subjects. Honestly though, I don't think it's the worst thing in the world to slow down your photography and appreciate the things you're photographing. So someone commented on my E550 video that it's just some random shitty digital camera. And that's kind of the point. These cameras have long been forgotten and replaced by the cameras on our phones. And I think that's kind of a shame. There's no reason you can't go out and make great images with these cameras. Yes, it's going to look grainy and grungy and the lens isn't the best, but that along with the CCD sensor is to me all part of the appeal. When you take photos on your phone and then zoom into those images, they look kind of fake and smeared because of all the noise reduction and other stuff that's happening. With this camera, the photos look authentic. There's no computational photography that's trying to make the images look better for you. So if you stuck around this long and want to win a random shitty digital camera, then leave a like, drop a comment, and subscribe because I'm going to be giving this camera away along with two brand new batteries and the SD card with the hack on it so you guys can get out there and create something. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you next time.